Let's discuss the system requirements you're going to need to satisfy in order to create an AJAX application and develop it. First, you're going to need a text editor of some kind, such as Windows WordPad, as you see before you here. And this is an AJAX application. The title is AJAX at Work. As you can see, it's going to rely on JavaScript. It's going to have a bunch of JavaScript there. And there will also be, down here, some HTML. You can see that it will display a message, a button with a message that's a text caption that says display message and when you click that button Ajax is going to search for data from the server behind the scenes download it and display that in this div element which is currently displaying the fetch data will go here but that's going to be replaced when you click the button display message this example is going to fetch text behind the scenes using Ajax and display it. This is the JavaScript that's going to be used in order to do that. So in order to work with Ajax, you're going to have to be able to develop web pages from scratch like this. And to do that, you need a word processing program, actually a text editor program, and such as WordPad. And of course, you can use any type of text editor you want and any operating system you prefer. This is just an example of WordPad. The important thing is when you save your text file, you have to save it as a text file. You can't, because the web page has to be readable by the browser. You cannot save it in the default RTF format, for example, of WordPad, or you cannot save it in Word document form. You have to be sure that you're saving documents in text format, pure text format. So, if, for example, in WordPad, when you save the document, you select the Save As menu item and you go down and you make sure that text document is selected. Make sure in particular that the rich text format, which is the default format in WordPad, is not selected, but rather text document. And you can save your document as an HTML file. So that's the most important part of developing Ajax applications, is that you're going to, in this course, need a text editor to save your text in, save your web, web pages in. Uh, you're also going to need a web browser. In this course, I'll be using Internet Explorer. You can also use Firefox or other web browsers as well. And this is the example that you just saw. The, the JavaScript you just saw is going to fetch data using Ajax. When I click this button, the web page, the web application is going to use Ajax behind the scenes to fetch additional text and display that in the div element that you see here that currently displays the text that the fetch data will go here. When I click the button, however, display message, the application is going to use Ajax to get the get additional text and display that, replacing that, this text, with that fetch text as you see here. This text was fetched using Ajax. So that's an example we're going to be developing in this class. And in order to get this to work, you have to be able to, you have to have a web browser. That's a primary requirement of using Ajax. And this web browser is Microsoft Internet Explorer. As I already said, you couldn't use Firefox. An important, a very important issue, however, is you need a web server. So the third part of the equation, besides text editors, web browsers, you also need a web server. You cannot simply open your applications on your hard disk and expect to see them to work. For example, you cannot use the open item in the file menu in Microsoft Internet Explorer or in Firefox. Rather, you have to navigate to a particular URL on your web server in order to make this work. In other words, you need a web server. You cannot just open your web pages, your AJAX-enabled web pages directly from your hard disk. If you're using Windows, Microsoft Windows, you can develop your Ajax applications on your hard disk, if you like, by using the built-in web server that comes with Microsoft Windows. And that is the, look for the, on the C drive, look for the INET pub, that's I-N-E-T-P-U-B directory. Open that directory up and save your, your files, your HTML files, in the www root directory inside the inetpub directory. 
that will be, give you access to the your AJAX enabled pages using a web server but primarily of course what you want to do is you want to be able to load your your data load your HTML files onto a web server, an actual web server, because that's presumably how you want to make them available to the public. And so that's the primary, your primary goal is to load these, load these web pages not locally, but on a web server globally available. So you're going to need some method of uploading your web pages as well. For that reason, you should probably get an FTP client or some web servers let you upload web pages using an HTML page. In either case, what you have to do is you have to be able to upload your data to your web server and keep in mind that you cannot open your HTML pages directly on your from your hard disk, but rather you've got to go through a web server because that's the way Ajax works. It works interactively with a web server. It does not and it requires a web server to work. So as you see here, this displaying the message used worked only because we have, we're working with a web server. So that's the three that's the three system requirements you need a text editor in order to develop your ajax applications and you also need a web browser in order to view your ajax applications and thirdly you need a web server that ajax can interact with that's all that you need so let's get started